Hey folks, DJ Bob Light here. I'm going to show you how to make these crazy 90s uh, surreal landscapes that you see on a lot of uh, 90s drum and bass albums, house rave posters. Uh, if you've seen it, you'll know. Good thing is, it's very easy to do this. What you need is a program called Bryce. Bryce has been around since the 90s. I think this first version came out in 94 uh, for Mac, if I recall. And then they kept enhancing on it and iterating. It got sold a bunch of times. Um, I think around 98 is when they added 3D with a third version of Bryce, just simply called Bryce 3D. Uh, but you need a copy of Bryce, and Daz owns Bryce currently. It's normally 20 bucks. You can just go buy it now. It works on Windows and Mac, but not the new Macs, uh, the new M1s, so keep that in mind. And it is a 32-bit application. And it looks just like Bryce 3D from 1998. Uh, the results are, are pretty instant, too. Um, it's easy to use on a surface level, but you can get very in-depth with it. It shines at creating landscapes. That's really what it's for. Uh, so not so much 3D modeling, more arranging scenes, carving landscapes, that type of thing. So you're going to need a copy of that. If you want, you could go buy a copy on eBay, like a very old copy if you wanted to be super retro. But even this newest version, I think Bryce 7 came out in 2011, around there. Um, again, it looks just like the old ones, and it functions like it too. And I'm going to caveat that by saying this thing's a pain in the ass to use. Uh, it is not like a typical uh, you know, game engine type layout, like an Unreal Engine, where you can just fly around with WASD and your keyboard and mouse. Um, it is a pain to use. But anyways, we're going to start a new project here. Um, and I'm just an amateur user. Keep that in mind too. Let's just say you just want to build a very basic landscape. This is usually what you're going to see when you jump in here. Pro tip, you can press one, two, three, two, and four to switch between the different viewpoints. And basically if I press two, I get this top down view. And this guy up here is my camera. And I can move this around by just clicking, dragging. But if I wanted to rotate it, I have to go up to this edit menu and use this guy. And you'll see on the bottom, it rotates around. So that's what I mean when this thing is kind of a pain in the ass uh, to navigate with. Um, but anyways, so I have my guy here. This is my camera. So my perspective is going to be looking out from the camera. So if I press one, this is the view that the camera sees. So I can go back here, pressing two, and then press one to go back to this view. In the top left, you're going to see a preview. Uh, of what your scene's gonna look like. So when I go to that number one view here, this is literally the exact perspective and scene that you're gonna see. You'll see by default, we have a skybox, but we do not have any ground. So I'm gonna go to create here and I'm gonna select this water plane. And you'll see in the top left, our nano preview updated. We can very clearly see water there. And then if we look in the middle here, we see this water plane is selected. So if I press two to go to the top down view, I can maximize the size of this, right? I can move it around in here. And then I can also click this M right here to go into material and I can assign a different material to it. So I select this drop side arrow and then I get to this material screen here. If you click this drop down, you have a bunch of different categories. So if I go to waters, for example, I have a bunch of different waters uh, in here. Again, very instant 90s vibe uh, when you use any of these, which is why I love this thing. Sure, you could use something like uh, Blender to try to achieve this, but this you don't have to put effort into making it look shitty uh, or old. It just kind of happens automatically. So let's do some, let's just leave the water texture. And what I can do here is render this by just clicking this render button and my scene will now render here. So this is what it looks like, just a water plane and a sky box. Let's say we wanna change the sky. I can tap one again to get out of that render preview, go to sky and fog here, and I have a bunch of controls. A cool tip here is you can click this randomize button, and you'll see in the top left, I start getting random settings and sky settings in here, so different uh, different fog amounts, different light angles, basically all of these controls are randomized. You can get some really crazy funky stuff just using that. 
um, you know, very alien-like landscapes in here. So kind of fun to just play around with that. Um, I can toggle day or night here. I can change the position of the sun, right? All sorts of fun things on here. Uh, fog volume, haze, uh, all sorts of wild crap. So I'm gonna go, but I'm gonna keep clicking this. This actually looks kind of cool. Sweet, I kind of like that. So I'm gonna go back to create here and let's just get a sphere on here. So when I go to create, I have all these objects I can drop into my scene. If I just click on sphere, we'll see that drops in right here. It's highlighted. I know something's highlighted if it's red and I can move this around in here and we can keep looking in the top left to see a preview. Uh, I, I can scale this just dragging in the corner here and making it big. I can also go to edit and use these controls to maybe do some weird like egg shape thing and kind of keep an, uh, oh, holy crap. Um, you know, a little egg guy there. I can flip her around. I can move it backwards and forwards. Um, all sorts of good stuff here. I can press two to switch to that top down view, maybe position it a little closer to the camera, quickly press one to go back. And if I render this, that kind of gives us a, a perspective of it being close. But I'm gonna move it back a little over here and I'm going to move it so it's not touching or maybe I do I want it kind of coming out of the water now it doesn't have a texture on it so with it selected I could press M just like the water come in here and find a good texture uh, let's go with metals some of these are kind of cool they're translucent so you can see through them which can kind of create a, a pretty cool effect of, opposed to just a solid uh, but let's do this 10 I'm gonna apply that and let's render this. That's pretty sick. There you go, there's your 90s Intelligent Jungle uh, album cover. <laughs> Very simple. Um, that's actually sick. So that's kind of how you do it. I can hold control. I can hold control. I can hold alt. I can't do any of those things. Actually, I'm gonna control Z here. I'm gonna press control D and I can duplicate that quickly. So if I want to have a few of these, and maybe I want this one like way far, far off in the distance, uh, maybe to get a little perspective on there. And let's render that again. That's pretty fucking sick, not gonna lie. Cool, so there's our render, right? Let's say we're happy with that. We want to export it. I can go to file and export image. And then you can export to BMP, uh, PSD, PNG, a couple different types of files here. And there you go. Now you can also change the size of this. So this is going to render, if I go to my document setup, um, here's my resolution at the top. And here's my render resolution. So what it actually renders to when I do that export. So I could export this to you know, a big wallpaper size thing. So let's say I want to render to 2835 by 2127. All right, you'll see my perspective here didn't change in size, but when I export, it will uh, be a little bigger. I actually think you have to always render it first. There we go. So that way it's uh, nice and big there. You'll see it's still rendering. Nope, we're done now. So I can go file export image now. Big version. That BMP. Cool. Fun stuff. So back to document setup. And let's say I want to animate something. So very quickly, very basic animation here. You'll see on the bottom, um, this is kind of, it, it says it's almost like the concept of keyframes. So you have this little scrubber here where you move in advance in time. So you start at zero, and as you advance for three seconds in, four seconds in, etc. And what I can do in the bottom here is click that little drop down and enable auto key. So if I move my scrubber one second in, and then I move this object in the back, I'm gonna go to the number two here. Let's say I move it over here. 
a keyframe is automatically created. Otherwise, I'd have to do it manually. And then you advance maybe another second here. And let's say I move it further out here. So another keyframe was created. And what's happening, the animation is scrubbing through all of those different keyframes. And you'll see behind, it's kind of difficult to see this little blue line that's showing the path of that object and it's connected by a line. So I can advance a little further here and let's say I move it down here and you can see that line. So that's the animation path. I can keep moving here uh, and that's what we get. So if I go all the way back to the beginning here, we can see that object in the back. And if I hit play, we'll see it start to move kind of out of the perspective there. And that's how you do a very, very basic animation. So I can play it from the top down view too. You can see it moving across there. Very basic animation. If you wanted to render that, you'd have to go to render animation. And then we select uh, how much we want to render there. I want to do the entire duration. So we have a five second animation. Uh, you can output to .avi, BMP, QuickTime, or Real Movie. Um, then you have some settings there that you can use. Uh, video compression, set a location, and then uh, you start the render process there. Actually, let me rename this. Ah, that's fine. We'll just go with that. And then it starts rendering. So you'll see in the bottom left, it is literally rendering frame by frame, which I guess shouldn't be surprising. I guess that's how all animation rendering works. Uh, not really an expert on this stuff, but since my uh, output resolution is blown up a ton and a five second animation is pretty hefty for Bryce, this I'm anticipating to take 10 to 15 minutes and I have a beast computer. So even if you have a good computer, it's not a limitation of that. It's the software being 32 bit. Uh, I assume it's not tapping into all the cores of your CPU. Um, so this program, very old school. The UI is old school. The manners with which you interact with it is old school. How long it takes to render is old school and that it takes for fucking ever. Um, but that's part of the charm. That's part of the fun. But as you can see here, very easy. You get those instant 90s results without having to purposefully do it. Uh, just due to the limitations of the program. So. Be sure to go check this out. I mean, it's 10 bucks on sale now, 20 bucks normally. It's not terribly difficult to use. Um, obviously, there's a ton more to it. It can be difficult to use if you're wanting to build some really complex stuff. I think that's what's fun about it, though. Um, you can keep it surface level or go very, very, very deep with it and build some really crazy stuff on here. So that's it. Peace out.